And this is Susan Sun Nanomaker with sunisofuture.net here in Rochester, New York at the starting point of the American Solar Challenge of 2012. We have here a Professor Rutherford, George Rutherford, uh, who's a physics professor um, with the, uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the ISU or Illinois State University's experience with American Solar Challenge? Well, we started in 2005 with a, a used car bought from another team and then gradually worked our way up until the third generation of that car became our very own. We made one from scratch in 2009, raced it in 2010, 2011. Uh, then they changed the rules, which we had to then go back and reconfigure the entire car. So they started from scratch again and uh, built Mercury 4, which is the model you see here. Okay. Uh, can you tell us the rule change that happened? The rule change was they reduced the uh, area of photo cells you could have and they also changed the amount of batteries of the different varieties you could have, the weight of batteries you could have, uh, essentially to make it more competitive uh, so that uh, money didn't necessarily always win the day. Uh, that's important, isn't it? Because when you think of uh, when we were at uh, World Solar Challenge last year, the, um, there were some cars that spent two and a half million, and that's a very different uh, type of uh, race, is, isn't it? It's a very uh, a different pond to be in. Uh, this one, uh, we have, counting donations in kind, about uh, 40,000. So very good. We're very frugal about all our purchases. Well, that's what we want to see, you know, less expenses. And uh, as a matter of fact, this way, all teams will be more on the similar playing field. So that'd be Well, good. ours tends to be more robust, typically, uh, if we can get the bugs worked out of it. Of course, that's every engineer's nightmare, getting the bugs out. But once we get the bugs out, it tends to be fairly reliable. It's not the fastest car on the track, but it tends to get out there and stay out there once we get it running. Oh, very good. And you are charging, I see, it, right? That's right. Great. Uh, they're also uh, not only charging, but they're, they think there might be a, a funny connection somewhere in one of the subarrays, so they're under there trying to, to pin it down so that we can see if it's a bad solder joint or if there's a cell that's gone bad we need to replace. Is there any restriction on number of hours you are all allowed to charge, or is uh, this is very flexible? Once the race starts, yes. Uh, you can do anything you want to up until now and when the race starts tomorrow morning. Actually, they will... Uh, probably impound our batteries tonight then once the race starts you're allowed to charge for two hours in the morning two hours in the evening and then of course during the race you can charge but then you're not allowed to charge any other way and your batteries are impounded so you can't sneak a power supply into the trailer and <laughs> charge them up that way so from now on we'll just be getting two hours of free charge in the morning and the evening and then all day while on the road how much power do you think you can get in two hours well, uh, it kind of depends on how far we've run the pack down, uh, but usually the two hours in the morning and the evening are enough, if you've had decent sun during the day, to get you back up to a reasonable charge in the battery so you can run the next day. The challenge is looking at the weather report. If it's going to be cloudy all day, then you have to slow down and maybe stop a little earlier to charge so that you can point the array toward where the sun should be. And managing the energy budget becomes more critical on a cloudy day. Would you say there are about 40% of uh, new members or old members on your team? This team has uh, yeah, about 40% are old members and the rest are new members. So it's mostly new uh, new members as a lot of teams, okay. Very so quite a bit. We are uh, not centered in one department, we're a university-wide team. So uh, we have had teams that were mostly uh, physics and technology majors. We've also had teams that had only one or two physics majors on them, so they've been We've had one uh, team that was a music major, a biology major, a chemistry major, uh, international business, and renewable energy. Those were our five team members on that oh, race. So fantastic. it can be quite varied. Well, I hope, uh, do you think there will be a lot of students thinking in terms of going into solar industry or solar energy in the future? I think they will all certainly consider it now that they've had a taste of uh, what the technology is like. And they also, by being around the technology, they know some of the promise and some of the difficulties. So. Uh, that will tend to make them, I think, more receptive to a career in that area. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Professor Rutherford. And signing off, Susan Sun Nanomaker with sunisofuture.net. Here we are with the Illinois State University's uh, team, Mercury, Train Mercury. Thank you very much. And you want to get a shot of uh, both the team and also their charging top right now? Okay. Thank you.
signing off. Susan Sun, Nanamaker with sunitsofuture.net.